Up until now, I have neglected to speak about um, a very important change that has happened in romantic relationships. And it is the centrality that sexuality has come to take. In her book, Sexuality, a Short Introduction, sociologist Véronique Mautier asks, how have we come to believe that sex is so important to who we are? This is a question really we can ask ourselves as modern people, given that sexuality is so important to us. Our sexuality, I think, is lived as the value and the practice of freedom. If I had to give a short answer to this question, it is because freedom is so important to us, the modern people, and uh, sexuality has come to embody our freedom as individuals. But sexuality, like freedom, is always institutionalized in multiple arenas. So what we call con our contemporary notion of freedom is actually institutionalized in the law, in consumer culture, in politics, in the market. Freedom is, I think, the main idea that saturates our society. Freedom also is not only institutionalized, but it also evolves and it changes its form and meaning. For example, the freedom in the name of which women and homosexuals fought for their freedom um, and fought against patriarchy is very different, I think, from the freedom to engage in live sex in webcam rooms. Because I think the sex in webcam rooms does not have a political or moral intent. Now, I think that sexuality has profoundly changed how we conduct our relationships. It has become dominant to how we define ourselves. So, how did sexuality become so important? I think it, uh, res it is the result of different processes. First of all, sexuality was fought as a right to privacy. That is, it was fought as the right of the individual to hold his or her life without the intervention of the, say, of the state. Second, I think that the emergence of modern sexuality was the result of a process which started roughly at the end of the 19th century with the emergence of what we may call sexual science. Beforehand, women's bodies had been thought as, I would say, the kind of imperfect imitations of male bodies. They were viewed as a simple variation of a generically male body whose sexual organs were turned inside. So a woman was viewed as a man, but with sexual organs turned inside. The, the sexual science, in fact, um, operated a profound change. And the change was that men and women were now viewed as biologically and almost ontologically very distinct sexual and biological creatures. Differences between men and women became viewed as the result of biology. They were viewed as inscribed and visible in the materiality of their sexed bodies. And if sexuality was a biological drive, this meant that it was natural. And as such, it was not stained with sin as it had been in Christian culture or Jewish culture, in Judeo-Christianism. And so 
From this, it was easy uh, to operate a third uh, characteristic of modern sexuality, which is that the sexual body was now conceived as a hedonic unit, that is, as the site of pleasure and satisfaction. And perhaps it was Freud and the Freudian revolution which most contributed to enshrine such a view of sexuality as a pleasure principle, which was previously repressed by society, but which now became a kind of principle below the surface of consciousness. And so this new subject that was conceived by psychoanalysis um, through modern people in quest for the liberation and the accomplishment of their sexual pleasure. The biological hedonic body became the main object and target of another cultural force, a massive cultural force, namely the consumer leisure sphere. Under the influence of urbanization and the rise of consumer leisure sphere, which we talked about in, previous, in our previous uh, encounters, sexuality became what we call recreational, that is, for fun and not for biological reproduction. It became the site for the exploration and the realization of the unrepressed self, of the liberated self, and this in a variety of consumer venues.